On the 8th of June, we spoke on the phone for quite a while. He had planned to travel to Atlanta that evening. You know, we spoke the way boys do. Uh, and uh, I teased him about a thing. His heart throb of several years, mother of his daughter, Dima. Kimono knows that I like a thing. And uh, Kimono equally teased me. He said, you know it's getting wet in Lagos because of the rains. You just make sure you take care of Efe and keep her warm while I was away. And I laughed. And next day, Saturday the 9th, my phone rang. Who was on the phone? Efe. Something was wrong. Kimono did not make the trip. In fact, he was in hospital. I rushed to Lagoon Hospital in Ikui and I saw my brother and friend. He had a mask to help him breathe. Immediately he saw me, he threw away the mask and shouted, Presido! That's what he's always called me. And we chucked knuckles and joked. Next day, I was at the airport in uh, Ikeja. I had checked in to board uh, an APIS flight going to Oweri. I was with uh, Benis Eriemehe, the cousin head of uh, finance and admin. After checking in, I called Efe and she kept muttering, We lost him. We lost him. We lost who? Nothing Efe said made sense. Immediately, I had to abort my flight to Oweri. I called my colleagues on the Kosom board and we rushed to Lagoon Hospital. There I saw my brother, my friend, my guy, Ras Kimono. He did not shout Prejidu. We did not chop no food. My brother was gone, not to Atlanta, but to a place I do not know, for a period I do not know. Sugar for me tea, you know I no cake away, you look for sugar for me tea, you know I no cake That Sunday, June 10, 2018, the media in Nigeria practically exploded. This world is full of cheats Oh, what a smelly shit Give me little sugar for me tea You know I know take away Raskimono was a giver He always gave his heart, his smile, his immense talent and his love to one and all He had no angst against anyone So, uh, it gives me so much great joy that for how long I've known him, we got on the Kusan board together. So it, it, it is one awesome experience that Kimono believed in Kusan till death. Kimono was totally dedicated to the Kusan cause. He was not just a Kusan member, but a 100% committed Kusan activist. As a hyper-creative person, he fought against anything that he thought would bring Kosan down or drive the music industry apart. He saw in Kosan a watershed institution for the development of the Nigerian creative industry, which must be nurtured for the next generation. Kosan, let the music play. This is a dub master, Raskmono. Me say, hey yo, I'm a board of director in Kosan, right? So, and we're doing a creative thing for musicians 
dead, alive, and future. So if you believe in Kosan, come over and join me and make your money. Kosan, let the music play. Until he passed on, Ras Kimono was a keen member of the Kosan board and stood shoulder to shoulder with Chief Tony Okoroji through every challenge. Anywhere Kosan went, Kimono went. Oseloke Augustine Onwubunya, known to many around the world as Ras Kimono, was born on the 9th of May 1958 in Onishao Lona, about 20 kilometers from Asaba, which became the capital of the oil-rich Delta State of Nigeria. His father was Onwubunya Amafuibe and his mother Elizabeth Nwowa. Between Amafuibe and Elizabeth, they had two sons. Uzumefune and Augustine. Kimono and I come a long way. And um, one of the saddest things that ever happened was losing him on that very day. However, I think he's lived a good life. And uh, the legacy he has left behind uh, is something to be proud of. You would miss him, especially in Onicholona. Kimono's death is a big thing to the people of Onicholona and uh, I don't think we'll ever have a replacement of what Ras Kimono stood for in Onicholona. The music bug caught the young Augustine while he was at St. Mary's Catholic School on Michao Lona. Try as he did, the bug will not let him be. He started showing the signs of what was to come when he began performing around his hometown. It was the music bug that took him to the Agbo based famed high life musician, coincidentally known as St. Augustine, popular for his high life song, Ashawo Nobi Walk. <laughs> Young Augustine learnt the rudiments of live performance from St. Augustine, whose Rovers Dance Band he joined. After a while, Agbo became too slow and not quite big enough for the dreams of the young Augustine. So, in search of the real deal, he set out for Lagos, Nigeria's headquarters of showbiz, the city of fast traffic, heavy nightlife, enticing girls and never-ending entertainment. If the young Oseloke Augustine Oumbuya thought that Lagos was going to be his to conquer, he was mistaken. It was tough, really tough. Lagos did not care who you were or where you were coming from. To survive, he tried his hands at all sorts. In between his different runs, the young son of Oumbuya, Amafuibe, played with the Afro Vibration Band of Perry Ernest Okocha and actually lived with Perry Ernest in his modest Umobi Street Suruleri home. Perry Ernest was the sweet voice that led Sonny Okoson's first ever hit song, Help. At some point, Augustine became a disc jockey at Floating Buka and with the likes of Buchi Atong, entertained at the once famous nightclub on a boat moored to the Lagos Marina. After a long battle with Lagos disappointments and hard knocks, Augustine hooked up with the group Jaxtis Reggae Aita made up then of some other young aspiring musicians such as Amos McRoy Jag, Black O Rice, George Orwells, and Majek Fashek. At you know, I was at Tamasi Records. I was the AR manager. I was I did do demo. Then that's where I did Kimono first demo song. So at that time, Kimono was a raster man. 
But we never get a lot of time. Now just clean dread, you know. But Kimono was the one that really inspired me to put on the dress. So we come along with my very good brother. That was why I did this first demo, which is called Rubber, Araba Style. You know. So we just love each other, be sure rest in peace. I miss him. Because Kimono, I'm not giving up. Life is a struggle. So the struggle continues. I look, Rasta don't die, Kimono is not dead. It lives on, his works lives on. We go up his family and his children. in. Justix, which had its base at Japex Studios in the Antony Village area of Lagos, was a major driver of the reggae revolution in Nigeria. The likes of Victor Eshet of the Mandatos fame, Evi Edna Ogoli, Oritz Willike, with whom Kimono had a long friendship, drank from the vibes of Justix. Amos McCroy Jag is now a minister of the gospel, but he does not forget those days with Kimono. I met my brother Ras Kimono in 1984, that's 34 years ago to be precise, and ever since then we have been as close as six and a half a dozen. Kimono was one of the few people who had the real soul of Jah in him. Easy going, loving, peaceful, nice and kind to a fault. Well, one thing I thank God for is that uh, he lived a good life and I'm sure right now he's in the bosom of the Most High, resting in perfect peace. And I'll see the rest there till we meet and patch no more, my brother. Shalom. Also pushing the reggae movement was an organization known as Rainbow Organization of the Rastafarians of Nigeria, Root Rock, propelled by Justix frontliner, Black O Rice. With the reggae influence in Lagos, the mostly shy and self-effacing Augustine Omoboya, with his unique dreadlocks, truly became Ras Kimono, upped his game and began to create his peculiar brand of revolutionary reggae music, very rich in social commentary, in which he relieved his life experiences and mocked Nigeria's oppressive political environment. In a ghetto, in a city, everywhere that me go, me see them. Some are crying, some are dying, some are weeping, some are wailing. Everywhere that me go, yeah. under pressure we will, under pressure, under pressure everybody, under pressure. As the likes of Majek Fashek went solo, Ras Kimono began his own solo recordings. The result of Kimono's work was his 1989 Master Blaster debut solo album titled Under Pressure. The album churned out several hit songs loved across the continent such as Natty Gets Jail, Under Pressure and the monster hit Rumba Style. And the legend of Ras Kimono, the rubber dub master, was born. <laughs> Yeah. 
The Kimono legend continued with the release of a string of hit albums such as We Know One, also in 1989, What's One in 1990, Rubber Dub, also in 1990, Run for Cover in 1992, and Lone Ranger thereafter. Ras Kimono was in demand and the demand cuts across. With his massive dread band, Kimono toured all over West Africa and Europe and played alongside many legends of popular music and was pursued by the media everywhere. Mm. Behind the rise of Ras Kimono was the managerial skills of his girlfriend of the time, Sibyl Amuta. As Kimono did the show, his navy guard, Sibyl, took care of the business. The love affair between Kimono and Sibyl took a new turn when they got married in an elaborate ceremony at the University of Lagos in 1990 after their big traditional marriage on the 8th of December 1990. Of Kimono's five daughters, three Senami, Nehita and Somnebi are fruits of his marriage to Sibyl. At home, as the decade of the 90s began, Kimono was a dominant figure in the entertainment scene. While Shino Peters held sway with Afro Juju, Ras Kimono was the king of rubber dub, his own brand of reggae that drove everyone crazy. At the big wave-making Nigerian Music Awards, the battle line was between Kimono and SSP. While SSP was the undisputed king of the enemy in 1990, Kimono cleaned up the awards in 1991. Kim, 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 this is not how we planned it, but God knows the best. He took you from us, but you will always be in me, in my heart, every day, every second, every minute. Despite you still stood with Koson till the last minute. And I remember my last birthday, you came as a brother, as a friend. May the Lord grant you an eternal peace. Kimono. Bye. 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 Kimono simply had many friends across the industry and beyond. Yeah, as Kimono. He's a big brother and a big icon in the music industry. In fact, it was Aroba style that really pulled me out of my hometown and I came over to Lagos. I, I, I really miss King. <laughs> the news of the death of uh, Mr. Raskimono Omubuya actually came as a very big uh, shock to me as a person. I was at the airport with my chairman who was actually traveling to the east. You know, when, the, when a call came in and the news of the death of Mr. Raskimono was announced to him, his, his countenances changed and I was like, are you okay, sir? I said, Kimono, you know, had passed on. Kimono was a very lively guy, loved by so many people. He was a very quiet, easygoing man, peace-loving. 
please love me. I'm, I'm really, really going to miss him. He was my boss, a friend, a brother. He was everything to me. Raskimono, I wish you. Um, Raskimono. They say the Rasta never dies. I would say Ras Raskimono lives on. So many legacies he left. How we met, how the impact on my life so much. The the intimacy at the tail end, as you know, uh, we were both on the board of the board of um, coasting together as directors. The joy he brought, the generosity of heart. I won't touch that. But that, that which I will touch is the tenacity for his artistry. The ability to travel abroad. He relocated at a point. He didn't forget himself in a foreign land. And in the 21st century, somehow, Raskimono was still very relevant. And he's still very relevant. Do you understand? Me, KSB, ah, Raskimono, thank you for that lesson of telling me that I have enough repertoire to keep me for the rest of my life in this Nigeria. It's that unforgettable. Gentle looking and all that. When he opens his mouth, you do not believe what comes out of it. You know, so, so full of wisdom, so full of, you know, of, of humor and all that. There is never a dull moment with with him. There's a lot to him that a lot of people don't know. I am considered one of the most humble, but Kimono showed me that my humility was not humble enough. The first time we really got to know each other, he turned up to at my event uninvited by himself. And that really humbled me to learn how to be an example. You know, we had a handshake in the uh, in the hospital and I told him, stand up, we have a shoot next week. We were supposed to shoot the song in a movie. This was supposed to be your next project, a movie. Kimono acting. But uh, God has a greater plan. I'm very sure right now they are dancing in heaven to your rubber duck. I met my wife in Kimono's house. I married my wife from Kimono's house. And um, he was very simple. His simplicity, in fact, was infectious. He became not only a brother-in-law, he became a brother, he became a friend, and he became a confidant. Oge Chuku, Nwa Maka Onwubuya, known to many as Oge Kimono, is the first child of Ras Kimono. Born August 14, 1985, before Kimono's marriage with Sibir, Oge has since taken to music after her father. Yes, a new style of butter made the garden glory. Ras Kimono, me say me bring it back again. Select her, bring it back again. Who oh, this year, baby, say, you know that. <sighs> my dad, my dad was a loving father. My dad was, my dad was everything that a child could ask for. Though I didn't grow up with my dad, you know, um, from my formative years, I, I, I grew up with my grandmother back in the east, in Aba Abia State. And I stayed with her up until she passed on and then I had to move. Uh, to my uncle's place in Aquaibom State because my father was uh, always on tour, you know, and I had to finish my secondary school education. So coming to my father's house, I was about 15 years old. That's not to say that I never saw my father. My father was always coming to visit me while I was living with my grandmother at every opportunity he had. But, um, if he had gigs around the region, around the area, he would make sure, he would make it a point of duty to come and see me, you know, and he kept up with 
all the bills that a father would pick up from school fees to medical bills if need be, if needed you know and um, the experiences I had with my dad after moving over to, uh, to his place at about 15 it was priceless you know because I, I didn't I didn't grow up with that bond of um, I didn't grow up with having my father around, you know, so the moment I had the opportunity, I, I felt complete, I would say, you know, because there was a bond that we couldn't even explain what it was for me not having to have grown up with him and then meeting him and it was as if we had been together all the years, you know, um, it was it was very, very special for me. I remember one time in secondary school, he gave me a surprise visit and um, he came with his entire bag, you know. And I remember seeing his name on the bus, Raskimono. I made it a point of duty to be the first kid to get to the classroom block that day, you know. And um, after the assembly, the principal sent for me and all the kids that were hanging around by the classroom block and they were looking out to see who Raskimono came to see. And little did they know it was little me. <laughs> And I was called uh, to the principal's office. I walked past my dad and went to the principal's office. And, and he admonished me. He said, he said, did you just see your dad? I said, yes, but it's a school law that we're not allowed to speak to our parents, except it was visiting day, you know? And he said, my friend, go back and say hello to your dad. And I was so excited. The next thing, my dad picks me up and he throws me in the air. And I was so shy. I'm like, look in my head. I'm like, put me down, you know? And then he looked at my teeth and he said, your teeth is brown. I think my teeth is brown. In 1997, Kimono immigrated to the United States, promoting his brand of reggae music. This was not long after he lost his only brother, Uzumefune, who passed on in the United States on November 13, 2005. Kimono, the quintessential family man, had challenges in America. Maintaining a family the African way and keeping up with the demands of the music profession that ask all of you was really, really tough. Between 1997 and 2005, Kimono struggled with these challenges. Speaking with the Nigerian Music Machine, the special Koson Week magazine in 2015, Kimono relieved some of his American experience as follows. My kids are all girls. I clean them, dress them up, take them out everywhere, which most American men probably won't do for girls. They will say, I won't touch them. They have this mentality of madness that if you touch your daughter, they will get something. But we are Africans. As a matured man, yes, I shower my girls, then I dress them up proper. Take them to school. Sunday, I'll take them to the church. Take them to the park. The reality of life in America put a severe strain on Kimono's marriage with Sibyl, which eventually gave way. In 2005, Ras Kimono left America, came back home, reassembled his massive dread band and picked up his rubber dub groove. Anyone would have thought that after eight years away, Kimono and his music will be history. No, sir. Ras Kimono continued to rock the people and the legend of the rubber dub master continued to hold sway. <laughs> On his return, Kimono fell in love again. Efe Okedi, the singer, became his mother, sister, friend, lover, and inseparable partner. I am crazily in love, madly in love, you know. Um, I don't know, like, that's would always call me. 
I'm his greatest fan. He always said that when he was DJing, I would stand and dance till morning. You know, I loved we we had so much. Sorry, I, I hate to use past tense when I'm talking about him. We have so much in common. We work together, we travel together, we eat together, we everything together. So we were all, always together. Ras is a clown. Ras is this, you know what I mean. Ras is a clown, Ras is a pest. Ras is stubborn. Ras is loving. So it was strange to find a very loving man and a very stubborn man, at some point he, he will tell you, I'm the guy you love to hate, or I'm the guy you hate to love. So, he was different. Of course, I've, I've had other relationships, but man, like you always say, you know, I don't mean, older men are better. They know how to love, they know how to tend women. He would call me my robo. He would call me baby. He would, but when he's angry, he would call me a phenomena. <laughs> so, and I, I, he loved it when I called him Rasta. And then Sweet, he loved that too. I love. Ras loved boobs. Big boobs. You know, he had a song he always sang. A lot of people that are close to him know that song. I love breast. I love breast. Every day of my life, I love breast. When I wake up in the morning, my mouth is on the breast. Every day of my life, I love rest. So, <laughs> and um, everyone close to us knew that he loved boobs. And then when he sees a very big one, he will come to me and say, Baby, who that? <laughs> Correct. And he will tell me, they can trick my eye, blind my eye. So, <laughs> he loved boobs, yeah. yeah. And then um, he was. He is different, very different, very, very different. One minute, when he's angry, he doesn't hold back things. When he's angry at you, he tells you straight, I don't like this. And the minute you're like, oh, I'm sorry, this is why I did this, he's gone. He's moved on. He doesn't hold anything to heart. Rasta cannot keep secrets, except you tell him, Rasta, this thing, please don't tell anyone. But if you gossip, I'm sorry for oh, your so he was a very he was larger than me. I have five beautiful daughters. Five beautiful daughters. And I trust God that we'll be fine. Uh, we have a lot of lovely people around us that I know, that we know, will always be there for us. People that genuinely love us, that um, will always want to see us happy and I know we'll be fine by the grace of God. Massive Dread Band will continue to be Massive Dread Band. My first child will be is a musician. She will take over Massive Dread Band and play with the band. I will sit down as mama and mentor and monitor the band. But Massive Dread Band leaves. Everybody, everybody in the band, every member of the band 
still wants to play because of the love. They're not just band members, they're Kimono family. We have some that have been with us for over 25 years. They're still in the band. You know, so they're all happy to continue to work with Okay, as well. As Kimono leaves, massive trade leaves. It is possible that Raskimono, Oseloke, Augustine, Owuboya somehow knew that the time was up. Weeks before that fateful day on June 10, 2018, Kimono appeared to be everywhere saying bye bye to one and all. The self-effacing kimono, who does not celebrate birthdays, made sure that his 60th birthday was heavily celebrated. On May 9, he brought his friends from far and near to come make merry with him at the Times Square Event Center in Ikeja. Next day, May 10, at the Lagos Sheraton Hotel, Ikeja, the entire Koson family joined in cutting a cake in honor of Kimono, singing and dancing with him. Just two days ago, three days ago, I was going through some of the catalog of pictures uh, that we took together on those journeys and those meetings and those trips. And it just dawned on me for the first time that Kimono had missed no single meeting that he was called to attend as long as he was in the country. Who knew that the rubber dub master, the great Ras Kimono, was embarking on a long journey. And like the gentleman he was, he had to say bye-bye to his friends and fans.